So welcome back guys, your boy ZK here with part 5 of the finale of my first ever Nuzlocke on Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Ignore the old footage here guys, obviously you can see it says Demise and that is my old name from a very long time ago as this footage is very, very old. So let's get straight into it guys. So after leaving Goldenrod City, we decided to go to the National Park. And obviously the National Park is where we're going to get our next encounter in our run. So what did we get? We got a Metapod, level 10. And I think at this time it was kind of like a bit of a fail for an encounter, but obviously we're going to catch it anyway. So let's see if we catch it. And we did catch it. Happy days for Metapod. And uh, we're going to call this Bad Boy Monarch. So Monarch was inspired from the butterfly. So now it was time to head back to Goldenrod City. So the reason why we return to Goldenrod City is to go see this lady in the flower shop. We then flash our plane badge to her and she gives us the squirt bottle for the Wasudu Wudo. So as we obtained the squirt bottle, we went off to see the Sudo Wudo and we decided to squirt it and see what happened. Obviously, this triggered a battle with Sudo Wudo and then we had to obviously find it and attempt to catch this bad boy. So we sent our trusty McGainy mount into battle. We managed to poison this bad boy and this is how it all unfolded. I just can't believe how much damage he did to my damn buddy Needle Reno. Oh, yeah! Let's go! Poisoned Pseudo Rudo. So there you have it. We managed to catch the Pseudo Rudo. Pretty big dumb. Not the greatest of all Pokemon in this game, but it will do the job for right now. We nicknamed this bad boy Doppelganger as a requirement for nicknames in all Nuzlocke that I play. And then it was time to talk to this guy, get some berry pots. And then after this, as usual, is to get our encounter on Route 37. So let's see how that all turned out. Growlithe or Stantler, guys. Come on. Growlithe or Stantler. Yo, we got a Stantler. Come on. 30% chance. Stantler, let's go. His poison is low on HP. What more can you run? Damn. No. Oh, no. You stupid Pokemon. Uh, don't you just love those trusty Pokeballs? Obviously, the Stanley didn't want to stay inside the Pokeball, so because of the poison, it fainted. How good is that? Here we go. Tauros, Miltank, or Magnemite. Go! Yes! We got a Tauros! My man! Let's go! And that right there was a reaction for the ages. So we managed to get a Taurus encounter, which is pretty darn huge. And we've run a drowsy throw at a fast as you can see, and let's see what happens. Go. Fast ball. Yes. Yes. My prediction was right. Let's go. Tauros in a fast ball, guys. Sleep low HP, level 13. The mission was complete. We had caught the Tauros. We then had to consult chat and work out a nickname for this bad boy. So we came up with the name Darren of all things. It must have sat nicely at the time. Now we had to move on to Route 42, which is where TM65 Shadow Claw was. And we ran into this crazy ass hiker. Now he said, here, take this. So we got the HMO4 and we're on our way back to the Pokemon Center to talk to Primo. Primo's misconception here is that he thinks that we're one of his fans. So we basically got to go through a bunch of the different answers and trying to pick the right one. So obviously you can go look up on Google for these answers and you can determine exactly what to say and what this will have resolve in is a free whip reg. Now this free whip reg will come in clutch later on really good typing which basically means it's got very minimal weaknesses and it's got some good stab moves so once it's fully evolved it's a very good pokemon so then we went and hatched this egg my whooper here we go guys this is my whooper should be hopefully i did that code right yes there we go pug champ let's go so we managed to hatch this whooper and we decided that it needed a nickname so we come up with a bit of a weird nickname here, but we ended up going with Axe Subi or Axe Zubby. No idea where that came from, but that was the nickname we ended up rolling with and added this dude to our team. After we added him to our team, it was time to go level him up and get some XP. However, generally at this point, you would use a different Pokemon to lead and get him to get shared XP in the back. But we made him a critical mistake and we actually led the Wooper. Uh-oh. And in turn, because he was only level 1, we obviously risked getting pursued from the Rattatad, which this time we didn't, so that was very lucky on our behalf. However, on the second time, we decided to go up again and we forgot to switch him out, and this happened. Ah, oh, this is bad. I really gotta get this dude out. Uh, King, please don't use Pursuit. Oh. <gasps> I used Pursuit! <laughs> I'm an idiot. So that was it. The Whooper was hit into oblivion, and we only had him for a short period of time. So you know what that means? We had to release him, guys. You know the rules, so 
So after releasing the Whipper, it was time that we picked another Pokemon to join our team. So we picked Taurus as it seemed a very fitting Pokemon at this time. Now it was time to get our next encounter on Route 38. Going. All right, that's what we're getting. Ah, it's a Magnemite. Damn, it's a freaking Magnemite. All right. Now, don't ask me why my reaction to getting a Magnemite was so poor, because honestly, this Pokemon has got some really good typing. When it evolves into a Magneton, it is really good, man, but... Obviously, I learned this later on into the run. Anyway, we decided to call this Magnemite Magneto because Magneto is such a goated name. His value for the rest of the run would go unwavered and you'll find it in the next gyms. So now it was time to go to the Burned Tower. Now, obviously, we would meet our favorite person in the world, aka our rival here, while there's uh, some Entei, Suikin, and Raikou just chilling in the bottom. So obviously, your rival decides to give you a battle of the ages. Your boy sent out a Ghastly, and I set out Little King to start the fight off. Most of this fight is pretty straightforward. They end up sweeping it, finishing their Quilava with our dude, the Graveler, with a magnitude 6. Pretty clutch right there. That is why I'm a Pokemon master. So Graveler clutches in and defeats the Quilava to end the battle against your boy. I'm not fighting with another weakling ever again, he says. We got the money and we decided to check out the rest of the tower. We got an encounter for this tower too, which ended up being a coughing level 16. Coughing obviously evolves into Weezing, got really good defenses and is not a bad Pokemon overall. So after lowering its HP, we decided to throw a Great Ball at it, hoping for the best. And in the end, we end up getting it on the one single Great Ball, which is freaking great. And now it was time to give the coughing a nickname. So after going through a few different options, we decided in the end it was appropriate for the time that it was that COVID would be the most fitting name to suit this style of Pokemon. Now, the next thing we needed to do was we needed to go train up our Taurus and get some more XP on this guy because obviously he was only level 13. And level 13 was just not going to cut the mustard for us. So we went back to Route 39 and we came across a few interesting Pokemon. First being Raticate, thinking, oh, you know, there's obviously that risk of switching with Pursuit and all this sort of jazz. But in the end, Darren did the job fine with a Horn Attack and managed to take it out. And we're getting levels just nicely. However, we then come across a very interesting Pokemon, as you probably would all know, which is called Miltank. Now, we didn't really think much of this Miltank at the time. We didn't understand what moves it would have had. So we decided, let's just attack and see what happens. But this thing decided to store some energy and we didn't kill it when it had one HP. So it was using the move Bide and it unleashed all of its energy and goodbye to Darren. Oh, no, no, no. No! So this was an honest mistake and honestly, I don't know how else I could have played this, but it really sucks that we had to basically release our Darren that we've just started to level up and get ready for this Morty fight coming up. But as the rules state, that was the end of Darren's time with us. So now it was simply time to get ready for Morty and hopefully have the right Pokemon to be able to beat him. So it was time. It was time to go in versus Morty, the ghost type gym leader that we're all threatened of here in Ecrotech City. Now the question is, do we have a team that could beat this guy? I guess we're about to find out. So here he is, Leader Morty. We decided to lead with our Nidorino into his Ghastly. Now obviously Ghastly doesn't really set up much of a threat and being level 32 probably just owns it. And in this case, we use Shadow Claw and just KO it. Ghastly is very fragile and its Shadow Claw just completely obliterates this thing. And let's see if it does anything else to this Horner, which in this case, it just okos him with a single Shadow Claw. So it makes you wonder now, can the Gengar do something? The Gengar comes out and hits me for a Sucker Punch. I hit him for Shadow Claw. This then leaves us with Haunter being his remaining Pokemon. We then had to switch our Nidorino out due to being low on HP. Graveler comes in and finishes him off with a Rock Blast, hitting him exactly two times and thus beating Leader Morty. This in turn gives us the Fog Badge and now into the next part of our adventure. So we then got tipped off that there was some drama in the Kimono Girls dance theater and was just this single team rocket Grunt who just wanted to cause some grief them. So we just sent out our Magneto, destroys this coughing with a single Thundershock and the reward for our efforts for beating this team rocket Grunt is by simply getting the HMO3 which now allows us to go surfing. So now it was time to go down to Olivine City and get our next encounter from down there. So we went and did some fishing and we ended up getting a magic cup now if you know who magic cup is in Gyarados and his effect on a nuzlocke's team he is one of the best pokemon in the entire game so we managed to catch this magic cup after paralyzing it and he was now a part of our team for the rest of this run hopefully we don't lose him but i guess you'll find out so we decided to nickname this magic cup fatalis as one of my viewers wanted to nickname himself after the Gyarados because he knew how go to this pokemon was so you know what they say good things usually come in threes well not in this case my drowsy goes down to a rattata from a single hyper 
So you'd think by now I would have learnt by all the pursuits and the radicates and ratatats. Well, guess what? I still hadn't learnt. Like I made a mistake. So I think at this point, everyone was just so defeated for me and disappointed that we just lost our magic that we just caught. So they allowed me to catch this same encounter in Ecrotech City, mainly due to the fact it was the only encounter you could get here and there was no other encounters in this town. And as we know, you're entitled to at least one encounter per route, per city or per location or area or whatever you would like to call it. So after catching the magic cup, it was only fitting that we nicknamed this guy Vitalis V2 to pay tribute to the original Vitalis. And then it was time to evolve him into Gyarados, one of the best Pokemon in the entire game. So now it was time to go across the ocean from Olivine City to Seawood City, and we came across a Mantan, our next encounter at level 21, which we nicknamed Surfboard. So then disasters struck once again. This tentacle thought it had enough, hit a critical hit into my Pineco, and simply fainted it. So we had to release this guy, and that was the last we seen of him. So now what you're about to witness has simply still blown my mind to this day. We encountered a shiny Tentacruel. What a crazy Pokemon. Full odds. It was the most mental encounter I've had on any Pokemon game to date. Like seriously, just look at how nice this shiny is. We managed to paralyze it. We managed to weaken it a little bit. Throw a Pokeball at it and hope for the best. Which as you can see there, we managed to catch a Tentacruel and add it to our team. Now, Tentacruel is a busted Pokemon with clear body and liquid ooze as potential abilities. It's got some really good stats as well, mainly in special defense and speed. It also has a decent amount of resistances, and it's not weak to as many things as you might think. So it was time to nickname the Jellyfish. We nicknamed him Lucky Blob, and now it was time for the Chuck fight. So our next gym leader is Chuck, the fighting type gym leader of Johto. He has Primeape level 29 and Polyrath level 31. So Chuck leads with his Primeape, and I lead with my newly encountered shiny Tentacruel with its clear body to prevent stat drops, and we use a Water Pulse to get some good damage into the Primeape. We do not kill him, and he ends up switching into his Polyrath. Now the Polyrath has got Water Absorb, so when I use Water Pulse, it basically absorbs it and it makes it useless. So I'm forced to switch Tentacruel out into my Meganium. Meganium completely walls him, taking a resisted surf, and this enables me to get ready to use Petal Dance. So the Polyrath decides to tighten his focus, thinking he could take a damn hit from me and actually kill me. I use Bebe's Petal Dance into the Polyrath, which Oko's, and then because I'm stuck into using Petal Dance, I manage to finish the Primap off with its remaining HP. So with no remaining Pokemon on Chuck's team, we are finally beating him, and we've now obtained the Storm Badge. Five badges down with only three remaining badges to go, guys. So now it's time to leave Chuck and go and see what else is remaining in this town. So after beating Chuck, as we all know, there is a lady outside waiting to talk to you. She notices that you finally have the gym badge and goes here, and here's the HMO2. Now HMO2 is fly, which allows us to fly to any different city or town on the map. So we flew back to Olivine City. Now we have to go to the lighthouse because there's a bit of trouble going on with the Amphrost there. So Jasmine decides to send us back to Sinwood City to go get us some secret medicine to hopefully get this Ampharos back in shape. So we go back to Sinwood City. So this guy says this ought to do the trick, gives us the secret potion, and we fly back to Olivine City, to the lighthouse, and give the secret potion to the Ampharos to hopefully fix it all up so it can restore light to the lighthouse. And voila, there it is. Jasmine goes, oh, I'm so relieved. Thank you very, very much. I will return to the gym. So now it was time to head to Route 47 for our next encounter on this run. We encountered a freaking Diglett of all things. So now you're thinking, wow, Diglett's crazy Pokemon. Well, it's pretty average. It can be quite fast when it's evolved into Doug Trio, but it can be also somewhat frail. So in there, we nicknamed this bad boy CBT Machine. So then we went back to the Pokemon and we spoke to this guy who gives you free items from your mum. He gives you a Moonstone, which means we can evolve a Nidorino into Nidoking. So Jasmine has finally returned from the Olive Island Lighthouse. Her team consists of two Magnemites and a Steelix. Her Steelix is her ace Pokemon, and obviously we definitely want to take this big bulky boy out as it has really high defensive stats, and we need to ensure that we've picked the right Pokemon for this fight. So Jasmine comes out and leads with a Magnemite. I lead with Dude. So Dude being a ground and rock type, can easily get off an Earthquake into the Magnemite, who is four times as weak to Earthquake, and this pretty much takes the Magnemite out in one hit. Being super effective, it goes down. So now Jasmine decides that the time to bring out the big boys, so she brings in Steelix. 
So obviously, once again, Steelix is still weak to Earthquake, even though it's a Grand type as well, but it's not four times weak this time. And it has a super high defensive stat, so we managed to at least get it down to under half HP, which is a pretty good position to be in. So it gets a Citrus Berry off, which enables it to heal by 25% of its full HP. It then uses Screech, which harshly lowers our defensive stat by two. But in the end, Dude finishes off with a Earthquake. So this can only mean one more thing, and that is Magnemite is our last Pokemon for this fight. All we have to do is take this Magnemite out and we have got the next badge. So guess what? Dude comes out with a mighty Earthquake. And the Earthquake destroys this Magnemite. As we said before, four times weak to Earthquake and the ground type move. And that's it. Leader Jasmine has been defeated and given us the Mineral Badge. So after defeating Jasmine, it was time to go get some more encounters. We encountered a March up level 14, managed to catch this bad boy with the Dust Ball, and we called him Maflop. What a nickname that was. So then we headed over to Route 42 to go get one of my favorite Pokemon in the game, which is Flaffy. Now, as you probably all know, Flaffy evolves in Ampharos, and Ampharos is a freaking super good Pokemon. Really good special defensive stats, a little bit on the slower side, but it has got really good special attack. So after catching Flaffy, it was time to give it a nickname, and we nicknamed it Amplify. So this also now leads into our next encounter, which is a Kingler. Fatalis weakens it down, lowers its HP down, and we manage to use a Dust Ball once again, one of my favorite Pokeballs, and we catch it. We nickname it Krusty also, and that basically sums up our encounters for now. Now it was time to evolve Flaffy into, like I said earlier, one of my favorite Pokemon in the entire game, which is Ampharos. It was such a good sight to see this, and I'm super stoked to finally add this Pokemon to my team. One eternity later. All right, guys, so in a nutshell, I basically had a massive break from this game and did not play this for a very long time. I returned to this about a year or so later after I had a rebrand on my YouTube channel, and here I am playing it in the flesh. So we basically took off where we were from last time and we encountered this red shiny Gyarados. Now, obviously I was a lot more familiar with Nuzlocke rules at this point. So as most of you might know, there is a static clause where basically it means static encounters aren't considered the same as normal encounters in the grass. So this was pretty handy and we nicknamed the Gyarados Gwyneth. We then obtained the red scale and we were on our way. So we kept Lance waiting long enough. We had to go link up with him to find out what the hell was going on with the secret operation happening underneath this house. And this was the secret staircase that we took down to suss it all out so we get down the stairs we entered the two passwords and i thought i was going up against giovanni but guess what there was a little twist right here it was not giovanni it was simply Nani? oh no way it's patrol this little pipsqueak thought he could get the better of us well guess what mate you've been found out we find out that the password has held giovanni but patrol won't let us get away that easily so patrol initiates a fight thinking he's got a chance to actually beat me and my team the fight was over relatively quick with a double kick from Nidoking King into his Raticate, taking him out for the win. So he basically goes on talking about this big spell about disbanding years ago. We basically just tried to speed this up as fast as we could. And he's like, good luck with the voice. But guess what? The Murkrow comes over and says, Hal Giovanni. And he's mimicking the voice of Patrol. So we realized we could actually use this to our advantage. So we follow Murkrow into the next room. So now it's Ariana. Ariana decides to try and stop us as well, just like Patrol did in the previous fight. But this time it's a doubles battle and I've got Lance by my side. So you're thinking, wow, Lance, Dragonite, all these cool Pokemon. He sends us his Dragonite, level 40. I sent up my Nidoking. King. We end up sweeping the crap out of these guys, destroying their Gloom and the other Pokemon, and that was that. So then it was time for me to go catch an Electrode as an encounter in this place with an Ultra Ball, which is a pretty big dub. I was pretty stoked with that. So after deciding on a nickname, we end up calling him Ernesto and setting him to Bill's PC. It was price time, the Ice Gym Leader. Seal, Dugong, and Palaswan was his team. If I can recall, I didn't have a lot of Pokemon that could really deal well with his team, but Ice types don't have a lot of resistances, so this fight should be pretty straightforward. So we lead with our Ampharos against his lead of a Seal. Now, Seal is also a water type, so Discharge basically destroys him, and we also get a critical hit also. Then it was time to send out Gyarados to take out the Palaswan. It's obviously got a secondary typing of ground, so Aquatel should have killed it here, but it lives, it manages to get off its Citrus Berry, and it's still in with a bit of a fight. The Poliswine reacts and sends a blizzard right back my way. Gyarados tanks us like a boss, hits him for one more Aquatel, and that takes up the Poliswine, which is Price's ace Pokemon. So now that all remains is the Dugong. The Dugong is not his ace, but it still puts up a decent fight against into my Ampharos. It manages to live one hit off a discharge, which I thought would have killed. It gets paralyzed, but then Ampharos manages to take it out in the end with one more discharge. All of Price's Pokemon have been taken out, and we now get given the Glacier Badge. 
So now Price has been defeated, it's time to return to the underground of Goldenrod City, where we have to kit up in a Team Rocket outfit. This will allow us to get into the Goldenrod Tower that Team Rocket has currently got held down unnoticed. However, your boy, your rival, has noticed us and spotted us out big time. He's blown our cover and a lot of the guards. So I guess it's time to show them our true colors. The disgruntled Team Rocket member could not believe his eyes. What, you're not a newcomer? The battle with me. So we battled a bunch of grunts and we come up to the top to go what we thought was the director of this place. But guess what? We got fooled again. His cover had been blown and he initiated a battle with us. So the battle begins. Petrol leads coughing. I lead Gwyneth the Gyarados, and when I decide to hit him for an Ice Fang, which puts him down to like 1 HP, but Weezing then uses Explosion and destroys my Gwyneth the Gyarados. I'm gobsmacked, I'm gutted. This is the second time this round we've lost him. I cannot believe the scenes. And just when you thought that this coughing had seen enough of exploding, it self-destructs on my Nido King, and I'm sitting there and all waiting to see if my little king survives. You'll not defeat me again. Nido King clutches it up and lives the self-destruct. What a beast. So basically in the last part of this fight, we use Dude Use Roll it into the coughing, and we have finally defeated Executive Petrol once again. He now gives us a basement key to the underground warehouse, and we're gonna go suss out right now. So we obtained the basement key and went down to the underground where we ran into our rival, Ya Boy. So he initiated the battle with us, and we thought, you know what, let's just clap his cheeks. So Ampharos comes in, takes out the gold bat, and Nido King decides to get off a double kick into the Sneasel, which kills him. Then we have Dude using Rollet into the Quilava, which is pretty straightforward. And then Dude uses Rock Blast to take out the Haunter. Magnemite comes in, a double kick from Nido King does the job into the Magnemite just finally. And that's basically it for this fight. Your boy has been defeated once again. So after beating all the grunts and getting to the actual director, we get the card key to access the rest of the tower. So after returning to the radio tower with the card key, we get into a battle of Proton. Gyarados takes out his Golbat with an Aquatel. Rock Blast takes out the Whizzing from our Graveler. And that is pretty much the proton fight done and dusted. So up next was Ariana, the next executive team member from Team Rocket. So my leading Gyarados takes out Arbok with an Aquatum. Amphi takes out the Murkrow with a Discharge. And Fatalis the Gyarados takes out the Volplume with an Ice Fang. And that's executive Ariana defeated. So now it was time for Archer, one of the head honchos in the Team Rocket Corporation. He decided it was his job to bring Team Rocket back into the scene. So guess it's time to verse him in a battle and show him who's the boss. So Fatalis takes out the Hound Door with an Aquatel. He then takes out the Hound Doom with also another Aquatel. And then lastly, we got Gravel the Dude who takes a coughing with a Rock Blast. How could this be? Our dreams have come to naught. Like Giovanni has done before me. So the director links up with us after defeating Archer and he gives us the rainbow wing. So next up was our encounter on Route 42, which ended up being the Tangler. Tangler evolves in the Tangrove, which is a really, really good Pokemon, really good stats. And this guy's gonna fit into the team just nicely. We then nicknamed him Oriel and we're on our way. We then got our encounter in Ice Cave, which ended up being a Jinx. Ultra Ball done the job for this bad boy. And overall, Jinx is a bit frail, but it's not a bad Pokemon. We called it Nyx and then added it to our team also. But can you believe it? Can my run get any worse? I come into a Graveler and he uses Rock Throw and to my surprise, just Oko's my Jinx. Goodbye Jinx into the death box. So next up was a Gligar encounter at Route 45. This is one of the best encounters in this game, in my opinion. What a goated Pokemon. He has some substantially good typing, and we also nicknamed this bad boy Zezarico. So we added Gligar to our team. However, the Gligar didn't match up well into the Sea Drop. Ampharos come out, but it dies to a brine. However, I didn't calculate this fight properly, and I was just simply in shock. We lost our Ampharos. So unfortunately, you know what that means, guys? We had to release him. I'm simply just devastated. So now it's time for Claire. She has two Dragon Airs, a Gyarados, and a Kingdra. Now, Dragon types, as we all know, are super OP and have a lot of resistances and are really good Pokemon. So we lead with Magneto into her Gyarados, who then intimidates us, which does nothing because we're a special attacker. We then fire back with a Discharge, and Gyarados is four times weak to his electrical moves, and then Gyarados goes down just like that. We then switch into Gyarados, who uses Dragon Air to set up on the Dragon Air, knowing that we needed a little bit extra damage to be able to kill this thing. We take a Thunder Wave, unfortunately we get paralyzed. It then returns a Dragon Pulse to do some good chip damage into us. So then I get parried. I Ice Fang this guy and it Oko's the Dragon Air. So now basically as the next Dragon Air comes out, I needed to get rid of the Paralysis on my Gyarados. So I used a full heal to get rid of its Paralysis. I get hit with another Dragon Pulse from this Dragon there. And then I simply just use a Max Potion to get me back to full HP. This puts me in a really good position, but the Dragon Air once again, despises me and decides to thunder wave me again to paralyze me. We get through the paralysis and we hit him for an ice fang, which then takes him out. So now we're down to Claire's last Pokemon, the Kingdra. 
We end up using a max potion to get our Gyarados back up to full HP once again. It hits us for a Dragon Pulse to get some decent damage into us, but we then use the Ice Fang to get some Chip, which in turn leaves this HP just over half. The Kingdra then fires back with another Dragon Pulse, which forces us to use another max potion. We go through a couple of states of just using full heals and max potions to try and outfight this thing. It misses a Hyper Beam, which you would think would put us in a good position to finally beat this Kingdra. So we use another max potion, getting us back to full HP. He hits us for Dragon Pulse, but unfortunately this time it critical hits us. So we're forced to go into Magneto, taking a Dragon Pulse, and the Discharge takes out the Kingdra, finally defeating Leader Claire and giving us the badge. Well, that's what we thought until we had to go to the Dragon's Den. We got our encounter there, which was a Dratini. We caught it in an Ultra Ball, and we nicknamed this Dratini Saurus. Now we had to prove to the Elder whether we were worthy or not of getting this badge. In the end we were, so Claire finally gave us the Rising Badge. This process could have been a lot simpler if you just gave me the badge in the first place. We then went back to our hometown to go link up with Professor Elm. Lyra notices that we've got all eight badges from the Johto region, so then Professor Elm gives us a Master Ball. So next up we had to return back to Ecotech City to take on the Kimono Girls and their Evolutions teams. So basically Zuki was up first, leading an Umbreon. We end up taking the Umbreon out with a Gyarados with a simple Waterfall. Out come Espeon, we use Magneto for the Discharge. Flareon gets taken out easy with a Poison Jab, and Meganium takes out the Jolteon. But things then take a turn for the worst. We send our Gligar into basically death into an Aurora Beam for the Vaporeon. Once again, I'm disappointed. Losing a Mon of Gligar's caliber is just simply crazy. Unfortunately, he has got to go into the death box now and be released, but at least Meganium takes out the Vaporeon to finally finish off the Kimono fights once and for all. Now some damn tough fights, guys, but we got past it in the very end. So after beating the Kimono Girls in Ecrotech City, we decided to go check out the Burnt Tower, which is where Ho-Oh resided. Now Ho-Oh is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time, especially from Generation 2. So we thought, you know what, I think it's time that we just go in there and we just catch him. So we decided to use our Master Ball, catch the Ho-Oh, and then we're going to add him to our team to hopefully use him in the Elite Four. This guy is a banger, and I'm telling you now, guys, he's coming with us. So now it was time to head over to Kanto via Tojo Falls, where we got our next encounter, which is Gold Dean. So we managed to throw an Ultra Ball at this guy, we called him No Cap, and we added him to our team. So after catching the Gold Dean encounter at Tojo Falls, we headed over to Route 26 to go get our next encounter. Now we ended up finding a Ponyta, Ponyta being a really good fire type evolving into Rapidash later in the game. So we managed to catch it in an Ultra Ball, and we called this bad boy Dany for Pony. Let's go get him. So then it was time to head the old famous Victory Road, where we encountered a Raihorn for the first time. We sent out Baby to do the job. We didn't want to faint this bad boy, but we weakened it enough to catch him. So then we had to consult Chat to find out a nickname. We ended up picking Zez Smash, which we thought was very appropriate for this Pokemon. So then it was time. There was one more fight before we got to the Elite Four, and we left Victory Road once and for all. And that was your rival, your boy. So your boy challenges us to another battle, another duel. And we decide to lead with the wrong Pokemon against his Sneasel, aka Baby the Meganium. So we switch it to Ho Oh, which takes out the Sneasel with a Sacred Fire. Then Little King takes out the Magnuson with a double kick. Nice and easy as that. Gyarados comes in to finish the Cadabra with a Waterfall. We then take out the next Haunter with another Waterfall from our Gyarados. Waterfall takes out the Typhlosion. And then we're forced to switch it to Magneton to take out his remaining Pokemon, Golbab. Your boy, the arrival, had finally been defeated once again. He was left in the dust. He could not believe that he lost to us once again. We made easy pickings of this guy. And then it was time to move on. So after defeating our rival, it was time to go evolve our Dragonair into its next evolution, which is Dragonite. This thing is a pretty darn beast of a thing. Now this Dragonite's going to be a notable partner of my team, and hopefully he helps me defeat the rest of the Elite Four. So then it was time to leave Victory Road, but then we encountered a crazy shiny Golbat at the very end of it. To get two full odds shinies in the same run is just completely bonkers, guys. It was then time to nickname our Golbat, so we decided to nickname it X-Wolf, as inspired by one of our members from chat. So after nicknaming the Golbat X-Wolf, it was time to get its friendship up and evolve it into Crobat. Crobat is a fast, speedy demon, got some good poison and fly type stab moves, and he's now on our team. So after countless battles and countless hours spent training my Pokemon, I finally stood at the gates of the Pokemon League in Heart Gold. So the first member of the Elite Four is Will with his Sucky type Pokemon. A couple of Zatus, Jinx Executor and Slowbro to summarize his team. It is time to take out probably the best psychic trainer in the world. So I lead with Magneto, my Magneton, 
and he lives with Xatu. Xatu is pretty obviously weak to the Magneton, and Magneton should sweep most of this fight. Magneto comes out, he uses a Discharge, which then tanks out the Xatu in one hit. Oh, go! So Xatu goes down after the mighty Discharge obliterates it. Out comes the Jinx, and Magneto simply uses a Mirror Shot, which is super effective, into the Jinx's frail typing and defensive stats. Jinx faints. Now we send out ho -Oh because obviously it's Sacred Fire, should just basically obliterate the Executor. Now, Executor is a pretty frail Pokemon, and the, the Sacred Fire does the job just finely. Next comes in Magneto again for the tanky Slowbro. Slowbro should generally take a hit, but you know, being 10 levels higher and using Discharge generally would do the job. Then, Magneto stays in one more time for the last exact two at level 42. Discharge comes out one more time and hits him for a big O co. And that is Elite Four Will done and dusted. Now we move on from Will's Psychic Room to go in versus Koga, the Poison Master. With his team Aridos, Venomoth, Fortress, Muck, and Crobat, what could go wrong? Let's get this battle underway, shall we? So first off, we want to lead with our Ho-Oh Rise Gnome, who is a very good matchup into the Poison type and the Bug type Aridos. So first off, he uses Sacred Fire, which simply just Oko's the Aridos into Oblivion. It's a very good lead, and this fight is well and truly underway. So Ariados faints, and then it's time for Fortress, who is a bug and steel type, who is four times weak to fire. So Rizo comes out with a massive sacred fire once again and destroys the fortress into the ground. That's two of Koga's Pokemon down, and now into his next Pokemon. So next uh, he comes out with a muck. We send in Magneton, and we thought, you know what, let's just destroy this guy with discharge. Magneto being the steel type basically walls most of Muck's moves in this fight, and Muck goes down, respectively. Next out comes Venomoth. We go into Rise Now Our Ho Oh, and you've probably seen this once before. But no, he doesn't actually go for Sacred Fire. I actually decided to use Fly, but guess what? I missed. In return, Venomoth toxics me, which then puts me in a bad position because I'm now badly poisoned. But that's okay, I'm not going to let him get too far down the road. So we just basically O-code this guy one more time with Sacred Fire. That is crazy. I cannot believe it, guys. That is some crazy stuff right there. Venomoth goes down to Rise Gnome, and that is put me in a really good position for the rest of this fight. I am poisoned still, but that's okay, because now it is Crobat as his final Pokemon. And guess who matches up into Crobat really well? Well, you name it, Magneto. So Magneto comes in, he takes a wing attack from the Crobat, which is very highly resisted, and he hits him back for a discharge. Discharge comes in and simply Oko's him one last time, which then leaves Koga with no remaining available Pokemon, and that's it. We defeated Koga of the Elite Four. So up next was the almighty Bruno. His team of Hitmontop, Hitmonlee, Hitmonchan, Onyx, and Marchamp was apparently meant to send shivers down my spine. So let's get the fight underway and see if we can beat the almighty Bruno. So the obvious lead for this fight was Crobat, and we had to see what his lead was. So in the end, his lead was Hitmontop, so we let out Exawolf, our shiny Crobat. Exawolf uses Wing Attack into the Hitmontop and basically sends his guy to Oblivion. I know I've said that once before, but it really did. Then, Meganium comes out for the Onyx. Obviously, it's Grass Typing is just super OP into the Rock and Ground Typing of Onyx. Petal Lance comes out and simply just one hits it. Onyx's Stone Strength was no power for me. Now, it was time to send out Dragonite. The big boy Dragonite goes against the Hitmonlee, hits him for a wing attack, and as usual, guys, he one hits him with wing attack. Dragonite is just so OP, guys. Out comes Hitmonchan into my Crobat. Crobat uses wing attack, and as you know the script, guys, he one hits the Hitmonchan once again. Now, there's only one Pokemon left, which is the Marchamp, and obviously Exawolf, the Crobat, would just basically go into this guy and finish his fight off once and for all. Out comes the wing attack. Marchamp, does he hold? He does hold, so Marchamp actually lives one of the wing attacks, and he heals off a Citrus Berry. He comes back with a revenge, and decides to do not very effective damage, so let's see what happens now. Well, guess what? Crobat comes out, wing attacks him one last time to take out the Marchamp, which is Bruno's final Pokemon, and that means we have defeated the third Elite Four member of the Elite Four. So now it was time for the final Elite Four member, Karen. Her team of dark types consists of Umbreon, Vileplume, Gengar, Murkrow, and Houndoom. So let's get straight into the battle, shall we? So, she decides to lead with her Umbreon. So in turn, we lead with our Exawolf, the shiny Crobat. 
Now he comes out and uses Poison Fang into the Umbreon because Umbreon is a very tanky Pokemon. Doesn't do that much damage, but we definitely get off the badly poison, just like when using Toxic. So Umbreon fires back with a Confused Rain to set us into a, a motion of disarray. So now Umbreon is now poisoned and it's taking Toxic Tick. So X-Wolf returns in the next turn with a Wing Attack to get some more chip damage. Umbreon then fires back once again with a Payback, but it's not enough to do enough to my X-Wolf. Now Umbreon is really close to being taken out, so we switch out into our Dragonite. Dragonite comes in, but Karen decides to go, you know, joke's on you, I'm going to use a full restore, while Soros now sets up with a Dragon Dance. He wants to sweep the rest of this fight if possible. Now, Umbreon comes up with a Payback. It doesn't do too much damage into our Dragonite, so Wing Attack now with a D-Dance set up definitely does some good damage. Umbreon returns now with a Confuse Ray to try and throw us off and make us do damage to ourselves. So, for some reason, I switched out back into Crobat just to ensure we don't do any unnecessary damage to our Dragonite, and Umbreon sends in a faint attack into the Crobat on the switch-in. X-Wolf uses Wing Attack, hopefully to take the Umbreon out one final time, but it still lives with a sliver of HP. Faint Attack gets returned. X-Wolf uses Wing Attack to finally take out the Umbreon once and for all. So next up was Houndoom, one of Karen's ace Pokemon. And guess what? It was time to finally bring out Gyarados into this fight. So Gyarados comes out, uses a Waterfall into the Houndoom. And guess what, guys? He gets taken out in one single hit. It's an Oko. Oh then we have Magneto with Magneton. Magneton comes in into the Murkrow, who's obviously weak to electrical moves. Magneto goes to a Thunder Wave, which then in turn allows my Magneto to have speed control over the Murkrow. So now the question is, can the Murkrow hit through the Paralysis? And guess what it does? It hits my Magneto for a faint attack, which is not very effective. And Magneto returns with a Discharge, which basically Oko's the Murkrow once again. So now this leaves two Pokemon remaining. So next up was Gengar. Now Gengar is a really good special attacker, ghost and poison type, and definitely threatens that team quite a lot. We end up using a full restore to get our extra wolf back up to full HP. It comes out with a spite for some strange reason. We return with a confuse ray to basically put this guy into a state of confusion. Now this is good for us. He hits himself in return, which then allows us to get off a bite. Bite comes in, doesn't fully oko the Gengar, but definitely does enough damage to hopefully within range die from confusion. However, it shoots through the confusion, hits us for a spite, reducing our bite by 4 PP, which doesn't really matter anyway, and we finally kill it with another single bite. So now it was time for Karen's last Pokemon, Vileplume. So X-Wolf should do the job just nicely here, walling this Vileplume pretty damn good. So my Crobat comes out using Wing Attack into the Vileplume, but it's just not enough to take Vileplume out in one hit. Vileplume now returns with a Sun Spore, which now paralyzes us, and there's a potential chance that we might be able to attack. So now Karen decides to use one of her full restores to get Vulpin back to full HP. X-Wolf comes out, uses a wing attack, once again doesn't Oko it, which then leaves it with a small amount of HP. But the second wing attack basically does the job, and Vulpin has been finally taken out. This now means that Karen has finally been defeated as a final Elite Four team member. We now mentally have to prepare for what's about to come before us. The time had finally come. We have made it to the Elite Four's end. The Champion Lance awaits us with his team of dragon types ready to belittle us and throw us into the mud. There is only one question now. Do we have what it takes to beat the Champion Lance? I guess it is time to finally find out. So Champion Lance comes in with his team of dragons. He leads with Gyarados and I lead with Magneto. Magneto has never let me down this entire run, so let's see what he can do right now. Magneto uses Discharge the four times weak Gyarados who doesn't take the stitch eyes very well and gets O-Code simply like that. Next that comes out is Lance's Charizard. The famous Charizard that everybody knows about is finally about to meet its maker. So now it's time for Gyarados to do what he does best and that's the set up. He uses Dragon Dance which raises his attack and his speed. Charizard hits us back with a critical hit Shadow Claw. We then fire back with a Waterfall, which you guess what happens now guys. He comes in and Oko's a Charizard just like that. Goodbye Charizard for now, mate. You're not as strong as you once thought you were. Now it's time for Aerodactyl. Gyarados is set up. The question is, does he outspeed? I think he does. Guess what? He does. Waterfall comes out. He hits the Aerodactyl for a mighty waterfall. And Aerodactyl gets taken out simply like that. So now all that's left is Lance's three Dragonites. So out comes the first Dragonite. Straight into our Gyarados is still set up. We use an Ice Fang, which is four times weak into the Dragon Flying combo of the Dragonite. Dragonite goes down, 
Simply like that with another Oko. Out comes the next Dragon Knight. This one is exactly the same level and it isn't his final ace Pokemon. We hit him again for another Ice Fang and as it slowly ticks down his HP, he goes down once and for all. Good job, Gyarados. Keep it up, buddy. So now it's time for the final Dragon Knight, Champion Lance's last Dragon Knight and Ace Pokemon. You know what, guys? We're going to send this off with one last Ice Fang to finally take him out. And it does the job just like that. He gets o code and that's it, guys. We are now the champion of Johto. We have finally beaten Lance in the process. This moment will forever be held in folklore, a testament to our triumph and determination for this entire run of hard gold and my first ever Pokemon Nuzlocke. So now surely it must be time to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. But oh wait, there's someone coming up here. Who could that honestly be? Mary? Oh no, it's all over Professor Oak and it's Professor Oak as well. Ah, Demise, my old name. We definitely don't associate with that name anymore. But guess what? Looks like Lance has saved the day to get us out of there. It's getting a bit too noisy out here with everyone trying to interview me, so he takes us into the Hall of Fame room to finally get inducted and get away from Mary and Professor Oak. We finally enter the chamber behind Lance, ready to induct our team into the Hall of Fame for the very first time whilst using Nuzlocke rules. To think this would be the first basis that would set us up for our future Nuzlocke runs. It is just simply a crazy thought. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in today and watching this video. It really means a lot to me. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more great content like this. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so drop a comment below with any feedback or suggestions you might have also. Your support means the world to me and helps me keep creating. Stay tuned for more exciting things and videos coming your way. And remember guys, your engagement makes all the difference. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next Nuzlocke. There's plenty of Nuzlocke's coming your way. Hardcore, normal, randomizers, you name it. And just remember, guys, we do regularly stream these Nuzlocke's on my YouTube channel. So if you want to see these live streams, then make sure to tune in. You can get notifications from my YouTube channel, or you can also join my Discord for further notifications as well, guys. All right, guys, until next time, thanks for watching. ZK out. Peace.